Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another video in the Infrastructure as Code on AWS with Terraform playlist. In this demo, we'll spin up an Amazon Elastic File System, or EFS, and mount two EC2 web server instances to it. If you're not familiar with EFS, you may want to take a look at my AWS Hands-On Amazon Elastic File System video before getting started here. I'll put a link to it in the description below if you're interested. To get started, I want to mention that there's a GitHub repo associated with this demo, and that's the Infrastructure as Code on AWS with Terraform repo, specifically the number 9 Terraform AWS provision and mount EFS folder. This folder contains the code we'll use for provisioning our resources. I'll put a link to it in the description below as well. Now, in the Amazon EFS console, you'll see I currently have no file systems provisioned. And if we jump over to the EC2 dashboard, we see I currently have no instances running. However, I do have a key pair named CCKP, and I've modified the default security group and added an inbound rule for HTTP from anywhere. These are the only resources that I've pre-provisioned in the AWS console. All other resources will provision using Terraform. So let's jump into VS Code and start building our templates. First, I'll create a new file named main.tf. And I'll add a Terraform block with the required version and required AWS provider. And for the AWS provider, I'll specify a region of USD East 1. Now I'll create a new folder, name modules, and in the modules folder, I'll create another folder named TF state. Here I'll add a main TF as well. Then create a new file named tfstate.tf and add an AWS S3 bucket resource, which will hold our Terraform state, enable versioning on the bucket, and server-side encryption. And I'll also provision the Terraform state locking DynamoDB table. Looking at the S3 bucket resource, we see I'm specifying the bucket name from a variable. So I'll create a variables.tf file and add a variable for the bucket name. Now jumping back into main TF, I'll add a module block for the Terraform state module. I'll save the file, jump to a terminal, and with my AWS credentials already configured, I'll run a Terraform init. Now I'll run a Terraform validate and a Terraform plan. And the plan is to add four resources. The DynamoDB table, the S3 bucket with encryption and versioning. Now I'll run a Terraform apply, passing the auto approve flag. And with provisioning complete, I'll jump back into the AWS console. And in S3, we see our bucket. And in DynamoDB, we see our Terraform state locking table. Now back in VS Code, I'll specify the S3 backend passing the bucket name. I'll save the file, jump back to the terminal, run a Terraform init, say yes to copy the existing state to the new backend, and if I run a Terraform apply, we see the apply is complete with no resources added, changed, or destroyed. Now, back in VS Code, in the modules folder, I'll create a new folder 
named EFS and a new file named EFSTF and specify a resource for an AWS EFS file system, which will get the creation token and tag name from a variable. And I'll also add two AWS EFS mount targets, specifying the file system IDs value from the AWS EFS file system named CC EFS declared above and grabbing its ID. The subnet IDs will come from the subnets variable that I'm passing in and be indexed by the count index in the resource. I'll save the file and add a variables.tf file and declare the variables for the EFS name and the subnet IDs. Noticing that the type for the subnet IDs is a list of strings. And before jumping back over to the main TF file to include the EFS module, I'll also create an outputs TF file, which will output the mount target DNS names from the mount targets created in the EFS module. Now I'll jump back over in the main TF and add the EFS module. Here we see the subnet IDs are coming from a subnet IDs property in the locals variable. So I'll create a locals.tf file and add a local variable for the subnet IDs. And since I want mount targets in USDs to 1A and USDs to 1B, I'll jump back into the AWS console and copy the subnet ID for USDs to 1A and 1B. I'll save the file, jump back into the terminal, run a Terraform init to pick up the EFS module, and a Terraform validate, which looks good. Now I'll run a Terraform plan, and we see the plan is to add three resources. The first is the EFS file system with the first mount target and the second mount target. Now I'll run a Terraform apply. And if we jump into the EFS console and refresh, we see our EFS is being created. If we go into it, click on the network tab, we see our two mount targets are being created in USD East 1A and 1B. And with the provisioning complete, if we jump back into the console and refresh, we see our two mount targets are available. So back in VS Code, it's time to create the module for the web servers. I'll add the main TF and a web server TF, and then add the resource for an AWS instance. Here I'll set the count to two because I want two EC2 instances, one in USD 1A and one in USD 1B, which will use the two mount targets we created when we provisioned the EFS. The AMI, instance type, and key name will come from local variables, so I'll create a locals.tf file, specifying a key name of the key I previously provisioned in the EC2 console. The instance type will be a T2micro, and I've specified the AMI ID which is for an Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. Back in the web server module, we see the subnet IDs and security groups will come from variables being passed in, and each time through provisioning, the subnet ID will be set from the count's current index into the subnet IDs passed in as the variable. 
So I'll create a variables.tf file. Noticing that the types for both the subnet IDs and security group IDs are a list of strings. Now back in the web server module, I'll also declare tags, which will have names of web server underscore, and then the current counts index plus one. So when these two instances are provisioned, I should have a web server underscore one and a web server underscore two. And finally, I'll specify the user data section, which will be provisioned using the Terraform template file function, pointing to a user data template file and passing in variables for the file system path, the mount target DNS name, and the server index. So I'll save this file and back in the variables file, I'll create variables for the file system and the mount target DNS names. Now I'll create the template file. Which will execute in a bash shell, elevating the privileges, doing a yum update, installing and starting the HTTPD service for the Apache web server, installing the Amazon EFS utils package, making a directory for the file system path, which will be passed in and mounting the EFS to the mount target DNS name being passed in on the file system path being passed in. And finally, I'll create an index.html file in the mounted file system path with a simple h1 element saying hello world version referencing the server index passed in 0. So the first time through when I provision the EC2 instances, I should have hello world version 1.0 and then hello world version 2.0, both updated in the index.html file in the shared file system path. Now I'll jump back over into the main TF and add the module for the web server. Again, the subnet IDs will come from the existing subnet IDs and the locals. Same for the security group IDs and the local file system path. So if I jump into the locals TF and add those properties, we'll see I'm specifying the file system path to slash var www.html, which is where I'm creating the index.html file. And for the security group ID, I'll jump back into the AWS console and grab the security group ID for the default security group. Save the file, go back to the main TF, and finally, we'll see that the mount target DNS names property is being populated from the EFS module created above using the mount target DNS names output. Now, with all files saved, we'll jump back into the terminal. Run a Terraform init. And a Terraform validate. Now I'll run a Terraform plan. And we see we have two resources to add, which is the first web server instance and the second. And before I run Terraform apply, I'll just jump back into the EC2 console and see we currently have no EC2 instances. So now we'll apply the plan. Now, if we jump back into the EC2 console and refresh, we see web server one and web server two currently pending. Now with web server one running, if I grab the IP and hit it in the browser, we see our hello world version one. And if we jump back into the console and grab the IP for web server two and hit that in the browser, we see hello world version two. And now if I go back to web server one and refresh since web server two was provisioned after web server one, and they're both creating the index.html file in the same EFS share, 
we see Hello World version 2 as well. So that concludes this video on provisioning an Amazon EFS and mounting it to two EC2 web servers using Terraform. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.